I want to thank you for joining us for worship today. You notice our format is a bit different. Our sound system is being quite finicky. We cannot get any music today. And so you're going to be stuck with me playing a little bit of music, and uh, we're just going to do the best job that we can. So we're hoping you have, are having a wonderful Easter. Uh, for us, it's a little less so wonderful. It's been a challenging week for us and a challenging day, and I'm a bit frustrated, and uh, we're just a little bit frustrated here. But, you know, I think that's what Easter is all about. So I'm confessing that to you right now. So if my attitude's a little bit off, pray for us. I would appreciate that, as we certainly will for you. But we are going to begin understanding that our foundation is rooted in the gift of Jesus Christ and his claim in our lives in holy baptism. So let us begin our service with a thanksgiving for God's claim upon our lives. We begin our service today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of holy baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us therefore give thanks for the gift of holy baptism. We'll give you thanks, O God, for we know that in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claimed us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your Holy Spirit, renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor, praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Hallelujah, Jesus. Keeper of the stars, Lord of time and space, I will give my life, lifting up your name. Oh 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Let, with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is with joy that we celebrate this day, the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ amongst us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession, but everything that they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Christ, and grace was upon all of them. There was not a needy person amongst them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. And they laid it at the apostles' feet, and they distributed it to each, one, to each other as each had need. Here ends the lesson. Our gospel lesson for today is found in the book of John, the 20th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, the one who was called the twin, was not with the disciples when Jesus came to visit with them. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the hands and the print of the nails, and I place my finger in his side, in the side where the nails have been, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now eight days later, his disciples were once again in the household, and Thomas was with them, and the doors were shut. But Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand there, place in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have not seen because you've seen me? But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Bless us, God, today as we uh, just reflect briefly upon these words. May you inspire us with your presence, for you ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a handout that is associated with today's lesson. It's called The Great Faith of Thomas. Now, typically when I've done this, I, I, I've often preached on uh, about doubting Thomas, and oftentimes that's a word and a phrase that you're used to hearing about. And I think Thomas gets a bad rap. And usually that's been my take on it, and I'm going to claim that again. Thomas gets a really bad rap. I think Thomas is one of my favorite of the disciples because he actually says things that everybody else was thinking. And you think about Thomas, you say, well, I can't believe he didn't believe. Well, excuse me, some crazy disciples, friends of yours perhaps, a guy by the name of Peter, who is always sticking his foot in his mouth, said to you, oh, I, we saw Jesus, he's risen again. And I'm sorry, but you'd look at Peter a little cross-eyed and say, excuse me, I think you're full of it, Peter. Are you kidding me? I would doubt Peter's word too. And you'd probably doubt these people, you just kind of claim that they were kind of hysterical. So like I said... Thomas gets a bad rap. I think he had legitimate reasons for not believing that Jesus was actually risen from the dead. He again was faced with these hysterical friends of his. He is actually the very first disciple, and I think you need to understand this in our lesson for today, to understand who the Messiah truly was. That he wasn't just a man, but also God. Peter didn't even get that. Thomas did. So Thomas was a very deep-thinking person. And if you actually pay attention to the lesson for today, Jesus never indicts uh, Thomas. He never says, Thomas, I can't believe you. Shame on you for not believing that he was resurrected. Are you kidding? Nobody else believed in Jesus until they saw him. But Jesus did use this as an opportunity, probably because Thomas had some, one of the strongest faith uh, in terms of the other disciples, to use this as an illustration 
to demonstrate that there would be people after the disciples who would have to come to believe without being able to touch and feel and see Jesus. Of course, he's talking about you and me. So like I said, we are the ones who will be especially blessed because we believe without having touched the hands or the side of Jesus. So again, I want to remind you, it wasn't Jesus that Thomas doubted. But again, it was the hysterical friends and, his, and the other disciples. So doubt, yeah, he doubted. He doubted the testimony of other people. This is a normal part of faith. Now, I know you think the word doubt seems to be contradictory to faith. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. Okay? Doubt is a part of faith. I will confess to you, I don't understand people who claim to not doubt. I don't get it. I doubt all the time. I doubt every day. I struggle and I wrestle. God and I sometimes have it out. Having it out today with God. Not having a good day. I'm pretty frustrated today. Okay? So we're having a struggle. Faith, however, is not the absence of doubt. Faith is an action that, despite our doubts, keeps moving forward. So I'm going to tell you today, I'm, I'm just outright confessing. I didn't want to do today's service. I still am not sure I want to do it. We're just getting through it. We're mulling through somehow. Okay? We were, in our attitudes, <laughs> not very kindly here. It's a frustrating day. I should say me. I'm not being very kindly today. I'm frustrated. But yet we move forward anyway. That's what the Bible claims to be faith. It's not doubt. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. It's moving ahead. Even when you're frustrated, even when you doubt, that's faith. And that's why Jesus, I think, is actually commending Thomas. Because Thomas, despite his doubts, keeps moving forward. Jesus knows that we, too, here in the future without being able to touch Jesus' hands and his side, are going to wrestle with doubts. The evidence, by the way, is not always clear. I, again, don't understand Christians say, well, the evidence is just, it's obvious that there's a God. No, it's not. That's because you believe that there's a God, therefore you interpret the evidence that there is a God. But to somebody who's not certain, they look around and say, it's not obvious to me. It just isn't. So sometimes the evidence is not always clear. Or in other cases, it might be completely lacking. Maybe you're going through a struggle in your life right now, and you're like, where in the world is God in the midst of all this? So did you notice what Jesus did for Thomas when he finally came to see him? He blessed him with peace, which is sealed by the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we doubt, Jesus brings peace into our lives and seals that with the mark of the Holy Spirit. So I know we don't always, we don't always have great, strong faith. Sometimes we doubt. Doubt is a part of the wrestling struggle that we have with our faith. But in those times where we doubt, God promises to give us His peace and bless us with His Holy Spirit. So I'm going to tell you these are the things on this back page, that keep me going in my times where I'm really frustrated, like I am right now, times where I just don't always want to be around or here, wherever it might be, times where I just don't want to keep moving ahead, but I do anyway. These are the things that keep me moving ahead. It's those grace moments of life. I'm, well, I'm not going through a grace moment right now, I'll tell you what, certainly not. But I've had plenty, and we think back upon those things, about what God has given to us. And these are the things that keep us going in those times of famine. Now I'll tell you if, you, if you haven't done so, I actually have a file. I haven't added to it recently. It's kind of a dumb thing. I should be. I have a file that I call kind of a, a happy file. It's kind of a blessing file. And I'll put little notes or little things that I get that remind me, oh my gosh, it makes it all worthwhile. And you know, sometimes in these days, you go back, you look at it, and you're like, oh, well, that's why we're doing this, and that's why we're moving ahead. So it's grace moments in life where you remember back to those days where something spectacular happened. 
Uh, other things that keep me going, people of faith, who I've seen walk through some disaster time, disastrous times, and maybe they've doubted, but they've gotten through. I would say I've been in that category sometimes, and hopefully in those times an inspiration to other people, but there are a lot of people who've gone through some horrendous seasons uh, in their life, and somehow they've made it through. I find them to be a true inspiration. The other thing that I find to be an inspiration in my seasons of doubt are great men and women who've died for a cause that they believed in, but they never had an opportunity to see to its fruition. You know, that's most of us. We don't get to see it until the kingdom of heaven, the entire story of what God's plan is. So sometimes we give our life for something that we just never see brought to its fullness. But there are people been throughout the centuries, throughout the millennia, all the great apostles. You know, we look at the church and the status of it today and how it grew throughout the millennia. The early apostles who gave their lives certainly didn't see that. I'm sure there were times that they doubted. Jesus himself, the day before he was crucified, expressed the same reservation. Is this all worthwhile? Do I really need to go through this? So it's not always evident. But he took a step forward anyway. Just like a lot of those great men and women who followed did, following his example. The other thing that keeps me going, I, I, I've met and had the privilege of reading some very brilliant academics and scholars and other people who, who have a faith, a very simple faith in God, despite their, bull, uh, their brilliance, despite sometimes the seemingly foolishness of her faith, these very brilliant people still believe. Um, another thing that keeps me going in those times, support and encouragement from other Christians. It seems to come right at the right time when you just need it. Another thing that keeps me going is, I, I am convinced that there's a Satan. I'm not always sure there's a God, but I'm always convinced that there's a Satan, and that reminds me, well, then there must be a God, right? Because Satan's always in my face, always wants me to fail, and always wants to see me give in to that hopelessness. And then, of course, there is a Holy Spirit who intercedes for us when we've run to the very end of our rope. So I want to encourage you today. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. It is okay to doubt. And I know you're going to point to some scripture where it says, do not doubt, blah, blah, blah. Remember, there are different words and different contexts for these words. But I am saying to you that you will wrestle with your faith. You will doubt. There will times there you will just give up on hope. But I'm encouraging you with this. It is at those times that God has given us a witness and other people through the gift of the Holy Spirit, most importantly. The things that God has done in our lives in the past that will nurture us and encourage us through these difficult seasons. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for the uh, blessings of this day. And um, I'm wrestling and struggling right now, and maybe people at home can see that. So I'm hoping that you will use it as a witness to them, because I really don't want to be here right now. I'm outright confessing that to you, and I'm confessing that to them. And I've got a really crummy attitude. I've been wrestling with a lot of things in my life. And there are times I'm just so frustrated, I'm just ready to throw my hands up and walk away. I think all of us have gone through seasons like this. And so help us to sustain each other. May you bless us with your Holy Spirit this day. And guide us through. So we might see a season of joy that's just around the corner. We ask this all in your precious name. Amen. As I said to you at the beginning of our service, we are kind of hamstrung today. Um, we do put a lot of work into our services, but we don't have the sound system right now, which is not operating correctly, and therefore we can't do a lot of what we would like to do. But I hope our service today has still been a blessing to you nevertheless. We're going to end with a song of hopefulness because I do want you to leave with some 
peace and hope in your life in case that sermon just didn't do it for you. And so let's sing together a, a song of hope and a song of worship. Thine is the glory, this great song of Easter. keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with, and gift you with uh, his special portion of his Holy Spirit this day, that you might believe, no matter the circumstances of your life. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So please go in peace and serve the Lord, and may uh, this week hopefully be better for you. I'm certainly hopeful that this week will be better for us. Thank you for joining us today.